All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 24th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2023. There's nothing like trigger uh, Twitter to trigger me. Oh, my. All right. <clears throat> we have a problem in Christianity in the United States. There's a lot of people that don't seem to know what it is. It's about following Jesus Christ. It's about belonging to Jesus Christ. It's not about uh, saying you're a Christian and then going acting, going and act like the devil. That, that is not being a Christian. So what did I just see on, on Twitter X? Well, first of all, uh, Franklin Graham, okay, someone who represents evangelicalism, probably the the best-known representative of evangelicalism in the United States. Since his father was Billy Graham. Say the same thing about his father. <sighs> okay, there was just a number of stories about, uh, and a little boasting, uh, by Billy Graham, about, or Franklin Graham, about how they were sending tons and tons of supplies to what country in the Middle East? The Palestinians suffering in Gaza or the Palestinians suffering in the West Bank or... No, they're sending tons of supplies and aid to Israel, who is murdering daily hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women and children in Gaza. And who knows how many in the West Bank? What is, can that man be so ignorant that he has no idea what's going on? Well, I suppose if you watched mainstream media and you listened to your friends in the Congress or in the White House, you could be that ignorant. That's the only thing I can, I don't believe that Franklin Graham is an evil man. Naive, yes, very naive, yes. <sighs> Not sure he actually understands the gospel either, but to give aid to those who are engaged in daily mass murders, let me give you a flavor of what's going on in Gaza. Okay, the, the, the Israelis have, are targeting hospitals and churches, and mosques, and United Nations schools, and everything else where people gather, deliberately targeting that to kill the most people possible, and to destroy the infrastructure to make Gaza uninhabitable. They would like the people either dead or driven out into the Sinai somewhere. That's what they want. They don't really care about Hamas. I mean, if you eliminate all the people, what is Hamas going to do? They can live down in their tunnels for months and then come up to a desolate wasteland <laughs> with a big wall around it. What's that going to accomplish? So that's their strategy. It's, their real strategy is to ethnic cleanse Israel. That's their goal, is a pure Israel from the, from the river to the sea. That's Israel's goal. Or from the river to the river, depending on which Israel's which ones you're talking about. Some of them want everything from the Euphrates to the Nile. Is that they, they believe that's their land. Well, God didn't give it to them. He gave it to Abraham and to his seed, singular. 
And if you're a Christian and you know your Bible, you know what the seed of Abraham is. It is not those people that call themselves Jews over in Israel, whether or not they are. I mean, they, they seem to look awfully European. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> of course, Jews are not simply ethnic anyway. But, uh, well, what's going on in Gaza? Israel are using snipers to kill medical personnel in the hospitals while the medical personnel are engaged in trying to save people. Of course, the windows have been blown out pretty much. So there are people in there like doing triage, and they're targeting them with sniper rifles. There is no weapon in the world more discriminating than a sniper rifle. It is incredibly easy if you're depending on the range. Unless conditions are windy and you're at very long range, you can hit exactly what you aim at. I know how easy it is to hit things. I played with center fire rifles for a while. Sort of a bucket list thing, I guess. And then I realized, okay, uh, once you put three shots into a circle that big at 500 yards. It's like, there's no point in continuing this. <laughs> You're not going to get any better. There's a certain amount of random chance involved in that, too. But, for example, I would blow up balloons, small balloons, staple them on a target 500 yards away and just go pop, 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 pop. It wasn't even fun. It was too easy. Just to give you an idea, A sniper, a train, you're not going to miss unless it's bad conditions and you're a long way away. And even then, there's no you're shooting civilians, so they're not going to shoot back. You miss once, you correct and shoot them again. They don't care. They're civilians. Just kill them all. This is how evil it is. Israel is that evil. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. With modern weapons, there's no excuse. When you're dropping 2,000-pound bombs on an apartment building, you know exactly what that thing's going to do. And, it's not, and with modern airplanes and everything else, hitting the building is not the issue. You're going to hit the building. That's the intent, to take it down with everyone in it. Does that affect Hamas? 50 meters down, 150 feet underground? No, it doesn't. They're deliberately killing civilians. There's no question about it. Plus, they've cut off water, they've cut off food, they've cut off fuel. So they're using every avenue they can, other than using nuclear weapons, or spraying them with uh, some sort of human insecticide, That's how bad it is. And and Franklin Graham is is boasting, oh, we, we brought so many tons of aid to Israel. And then there's fel, uh, Ted Cruz. Twitter X suggested I subscribe to Ted Cruz. Once upon a time, I actually bought a Ted Cruz poster when he was an alternative to Trump back in 2016. That's, that was the first time I voted in many years, and it's not, probably the last time I'll vote. Because there aren't any good choices. There's, you know, the, the Christians that run aren't, aren't really Christians. Not so Christian enough where they'd realize that what they're trying to do is a waste of time. Because they will never, this country will never elect a truly Christian government because... There's too many sinners in this country. They don't want that. We certainly don't want these Puritan dictatorship that some want us to have. No way. And none of that. That's a, it was simply a, uh, that will be a reproach to the name of Christ, as the Puritans in New England behave, became, with their madness up there. You know, that this, we are still reminded of the Salem witch trials. 
which were not Christian at all. That is not, the Puritans in New England were not genuine Christians. They were pursuing a different thing that's not really Christianity. It's not centered in, in God and his love. It's centered in something else. So, uh, but Ted Cruz, there was, he was complaining because of the picture of what he posted a picture of Washington, D.C., a monument of some kind there. It was along a step, a flight of steps that had Gaza spray painted on the, the wall next to these steps. And he was complaining about uh, defacing uh, national monuments. Well, who defaces the nation and the, uh, the things that America should be honoring more than a senator who supports genocide, who's in the pockets of the, uh, who, who Israel has in their pocket, apparently, who is doing more violence to America than corrupt politicians who work for a foreign entity rather than the American people. What else was he complaining about? The border. The border. You know, I don't care how high a wall you build down there. It won't prevent people from climbing over it or going under it or going through it. What do you do? Think the Mexicans are stupid? Young men? You know, if you got a, a grappling hook and a rope... You're going to build a fence high enough to keep them out? I mean, I used to drive down to, to near the border there and you, where they'd put the fence in. Yeah, you could see a guy, he'd go up, throw the hook, go up on top, come up the hook, uh, the rope. And of course, they've already got across the river, which is a bigger obstacle than the fence. And then they, they put the ropes down, and they help other people on top, and then they put the rope on the other side, and they lower, people go down the other side. <laughs> so for a, a hook, and so at most, if you brought, bought it all brand new, of good quality stuff, it probably cost you 50 bucks, right? And so they're going to risk their lives. They're, they're willing to do all kinds of things to get to the United States. So you're going to build a wall high enough to keep them out. That's a delusion. That's a delusion. I think the approach now, the the by the the, uh, the democratic approach to border control is this: you simply reduce the American um, cities, especially in California, to such a state of decay and crime and homelessness that the all the the illegals will leave the border, leave the country and go someplace better. That appears to be the plan. That, that seems to be what they're doing, isn't it? Who will want to come here? Just broadcast the American news coverage. Or some of the, the people that have, especially on YouTube, that have gone back home after 10 years and are like, yikes, what's happened here? In L.A. and those areas around there, and you see the, the videos of them driving through their own old streets and say, Oh, this place has turned into a dump, a sewer. Yikes. Glad I'd left. <laughs> There's an awful lot of that out there. In fact, the town I live near, one of, somebody did a video in one of the worst country, towns in the United States. So one, one right down the street. Yeah, okay. That is pretty bad. So what is this? What's going on? Should we tolerate people that call themselves Christians that act like this? No. Again, with Franklin, I think it's just a matter of, of uh, manifest ignorance. And the American media likes the American people to be ignorant. They don't do anything to, to prevent that at all because they get paid by the same people that pay the Congress. And those corporations are often owned by those people, people with with uh, divided loyalty, uh, dual citizenship kind of things. Should a person be allowed to be in Congress that has dual citizenship? I wouldn't think so, would you? Why is anybody allowed to have dual citizenship? I mean, I could see like an international citizenship. Or, or if you have dual citizenship, you're not allowed to vote. You're like a permanent resident 
but nothing more than that if you want dual citizenship. Because you do not have, your interests are not, uh, you know, in countries that are hostile to you. Israel's hostile to the interests of the United States. Israel doesn't care about the United States. They're dragging us down the hole with them. You know, somebody somebody had pointed out the danger of trying to save a drowning man that you usually, like, maybe club them over the head or something to, because they will drag you down. You have to come up behind them and get them in a chokehold around the neck because they'll struggle and take you down. That's what Israel is doing in the United States. And the United States is in a very self-destructive course anyway. Like, we, we have... Uh, incredibly evil people in power uh, that have some strange vision of global domination and have the United States with, on military bases all over this world. Why are we there? Not for the good of the American people. They're supposed to be the Department of Defense. That means you put the troops on the borders. Well, they used to be. Protecting the United States from foreign invasion. But who would want to invade the United States? I mean, we're sort of got this huge moat around us called the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. And then in the north, you go far enough, and then there's the North Pole there. And and even on the southern border, I mean, the, the, the mesquite and cat's claw on both sides of the river are about the strongest fence you could ever possibly imagine. Do these people have our interests in mind? No, they don't. They you, they manipulate us through fear, like Ted Cruz does. You want to solve the border problem? Well, do it intelligently. Help Mexico and other countries in the South. The people that come here from Mexico, for example, are the people Mexico needs to build up their own country. The ambitious ones that are young and strong and want to get ahead will help them to do that in Mexico. It'll be a lot cheaper than dealing with them here. I mean, it's, it's, you have to keep the interests of others in mind, too. Not only your own personal interests. That's what the Scripture tells us in the New Testament. Do not seek only your own interests, but also the interests of others. It's just common sense. But Ted Cruz, you know, while he is uh, sending, you know, engaging in a partner in genocide, he's complaining about people spray painting Gaza. On, well, maybe that's because it bothers his conscience. Nah, he doesn't have a conscience. I don't think Ted Cruz does. How can, how can you be a United States senator and have a conscience? I think that's incompatible with that job position as it currently exists. I mean, how many congressmen are, are senators are unwilling to compromise? They stand for their values or for God's values would be better. With uh, Not willing to play political games. Not willing to vote for things they don't really believe in. Play these political maneuvers. Is there any? Are there any that don't play the games? That will not compromise their integrity? Certainly not a majority. Is there even a minority? And even when they do stand for something that's right, what is their motivation? Is it godly or ungodly? That's a problem with you have to watch out. Christians have to watch out. Uh, people, will, people will use us. Politicians use us for their own personal ends. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. 
For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed when made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. One final thing. Pope Francis published this, what did he call it? Um, uh, see if I can, I got to look it up. I don't want to get the, I want to make sure everybody knows what the actual name is on that. Uh, look to my Rome file here. Fiducia supplicans. Okay, this is it. Dated the 18th of December, 2023. So this has made a huge splash on the internet. Uh, Bishop's uh, arc. Archbishop Vigano has accused Francis of being uh, a usurper, uh, his being in the papacy, uh, an abomination that makes desolate, or the abomination of desolation. What else did he say? Well, he was pretty outspoken. Uh, Franklin Graham on Twitter X made a comment on on this document about how it is wrong and everything. Well, the only thing I can say about both men is they couldn't have read it. They couldn't have read this document and made those judgments on it because it is typical Vatican Jesuitical goo that says nothing. It says nothing. It sends your mind to spinning as it whipsaws you from one to the other. Uh, blessings of same sex is good, but bless it. We don't bless. Uh, we, we we don't do it. It's not about marriage. It's about the difference between liturgical blessing and common pious blessing, and the blessing that goes up and the blessing that goes down, and. So basically it says that you can bless people, any people, regardless, like in a public thing or meeting or whatever, just a general blessing, as long as it doesn't look at all like a marriage or a liturgical rite or has sanction of the church behind it. So if people come to you, and for example, this would be an example of what's approved by this document. So a couple, uh, a same-sex couple comes to a priest or pastor, or anybody, any Christian, and says, confesses they're in a sinful relationship. Uh, we, we'd like, we, we don't like being in this sinful relationship, but we're, we're slaves to sin. We want to be free. Uh, we, we want to do what's right in the sight of God. Can you please bless me and ask God to help us and assist us to, to grow, to become follow, his followers? Yes, I can bless that. And so can anyone else. And that's basically what the document says. Why Pope Francis would put this out? Now, the guy that wrote this document, uh, no. But this is, what is, this is, why would Francis put this document out that says basically nothing? Yes, it does not change the teaching of the church at all. So what's the point? 
other than 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 revealing his his enemies to 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 put his enemies in a trap because they'd see a summary of this, and rather than read the whole document, which is forty five paragraphs long, they would simply go off and fly off the handle and uh, uh, take a shot at Francis and call him antichrist and uh, the abomination of desolation, and give him grounds to dismiss them. Vigano, you you were baited. Vigano, he baited you. Uh, who else got baited? Well, several did. Several did. So Vigano, who used to be the nuncio to the United States, yeah, he's he was baited and he took the, he took the bait. He took the bait. He didn't read the document. <laughs> and so Franklin Graham also commented on this document, and he said it's wrong to bless homosexual marriages. This doesn't do that. He took the bait, too. He didn't read the document. Not that it's easy to understand. I mean, you have to... It does whipsaw you back and forth. One paragraph says this. The next paragraph says the opposite. And like, okay. But no, it doesn't change the Catholic Church teaching, teaching at all. At all. It was just bait. And the other purpose, other than baiting his enemies to give them grounds to dismiss them, retire them, or take their their dwelling, their apartment away. I'm sorry, you're now confined to your basement kind of thing. Like what they do in Congress, you know. Uh, the other thing is gradualism. Sa Satan uses gradualism. This is exactly what I saw in the uh, Lutheran Evangelical Lutheran Church of America is they, they keep after, the comes from the top down, and they gradually wear down the people in the pew that hold to traditional values, that hold to biblical Christianity. So it'll be step by step by step, and they try to change your thinking a step at a time. It's like a ratchet. So they, they hit you with something, and then you get used to it. You, you resist, but then you get, gradually get accustomed to it. Uh, and then they hit you it again with something again. So they they don't they 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 do it gradually, step by step. So you don't become too alarmed and just leave, or cease putting anything in the offering, which is what you should do. Punish them every time. But Christians are too dumb; they don't realize the power they have. See. The, the institution, all institutions run on money. And where do they get the money? The congregation simply chokes off the bad actors. And actually this happened in Catholic, some Catholic churches too. What they do then, they, they provide funding to the people that actually pay the bills around, they do it in a roundabout way, rather than put it through the hands of the leadership. So the leadership gets defunded, but the essential maintenance on the building and the taxes and stuff get paid. <laughs> but the salaries don't get paid. Uh, nothing gets paid. You know, in other words, it's a, it is a controlled um, uh, sanctions, individuals, individuals sanctioning the organization. And it works. It works. So if the pastor gets out of hand, they simply don't get an offering that week. They'll take the hand. When their offering goes, plummets. Say, like, what did I say? What did I do? Why are they upset with me? Why did the offering go and the, just disappear? They'll get the message. They'll get the message. They'll figure it out. But you've got to get their attention. And there's nothing like grabbing their pocketbook to get their attention. But this, so, uh, but Francis here, so th it's the incrementalism. He's gradually, he's now see, he's done this too. There are some radicals in Germany, and he's gone after them too. Why? Because they were getting too far ahead. They were, were being too obvious. Uh, Satan has his drumbeat, and you have to go with his drumbeat because he knows how fast to adjust, to, uh, to uh, um, bring in his agenda. So you have to go by the drumbeat of the master in the back. You know, remember that movie Ben Hur, with the the rowers I had to all row to the the beat of the drummer. That's how it works. Satan has the drum. 
He sets the pace. And you have to go by his pace or you get punished. Road too fast and you get punished. Road too slow, you get punished. That's how it works. That's how his kingdom works. Fear and punishment. But yeah, this is true. Uh, I don't know why any Catholic would read anything that comes out of Rome. Uh, because it's just garbage. Just don't fund them. Don't fund them. Uh, if you've got a faithful priest and a faithful congregation, they should consider potential actions that they could take to put sanctions on the Pope and the Vatican. <laughs> because they don't get money from anybody but you. And if just the faithful stopped giving, they would get the message really quick, really quick. And you get faithful priests out there that they're willing to give you sacraments regardless of what the Pope says. Just, we'll just ignore them. We don't, we don't, we, we, we have, see, this is another thing you do, use selective deafness. Rather than open opposition, just fail to hear things. My father was good at that. When he got home from work, he'd pick up the newspaper and he would be completely deaf. Unless there was something he actually wanted to hear. <laughs> we could be making noise and asking him questions. He didn't hear any of it. But if something happened that he needed to hear, well, he heard it immediately. So, so just ignore. Just ignore what's going on. Because... Uh, it's it's you know it's it's like like Francis too. Just he's gonna die. He, he's he's past his expiration date already, and but he's he set things up so his successor will be um, like or worse. But the way you deal with that, you just have that. That's not God's. The, the papacy does not come from God. Catholics, you need to go back and start reading the New Testament to find out what the teachings of Jesus Christ and his apostles actually are. Because that's the apostolic church there. That thing in Rome is not of Peter. No. You need to read the books of Peter, what he actually said. You need to read the writings of Paul and John and the Gospels. Find out what true Christianity is, what apostolic Christianity is. Because you can't follow Jesus if you don't know what Jesus and the apostles taught. It's important to look, too, when you look at Jesus' writings in, in the, or Jesus' Gospels and what Jesus says there. Remember, that's before the cross. So to, you go to the epistles and look to where the apostles talk about the same subject matter and how they interpret it, because there's a difference between before and after the cross, and there had to be. Because if Satan knew the plan, he would not have crucified our Lord and done himself in in the process. God has a sense of irony, a really great sense of irony, that, that Satan, by killing, the, murdering Jesus, destroyed his own kingdom and sealed his doom. Ah, how fitting, how a fitting way to punish the devil by his own hands, so to speak. He destroyed himself. He's not completely gone yet, but the sentence has already been passed. He has already been judged. Now just waiting the execution of that sentence. So, uh, yeah, there are ways to handle these things. But you need to get back and re uh, really learn the New Testament, especially. So you're be you'll be able to recognize when you're being lied to, when you're being deceived. Because these popes, especially this current one, they don't serve Jesus Christ. He's not a servant of Christ. He worships Pachamamas, Mother Earth. He's a pagan. You have to understand that. He's a pagan. And that's his program, paganizing the church, making everybody his new universal green socialist world. Mother Earth worship rather than worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you see that? You should be able to see that. 
unless you're not paying any attention, which is dangerous. We have this, there's, Christ has one church. Even as the Catholic Catechism says, it's all those who trust in Jesus Christ. Yep. This book has a lot of good things in it. Not everything, but a lot, a lot. Yep. It tells you that their, their understanding of the, the true church is correct. But the true church is all those, as they say, all those who belong to Christ. All those who are in Christ. All those in whom Christ dwells. Because that comes out of the Bible. That's why you need to read the New Testament and read it and read it until it gets into you. So you can recognize when they're telling you the truth and when they are deceiving you. And as you know, some of these people have a reputation. A particular society, the Jesuits, have a reputation for being a little bit tricky. Of course, they've been banned by the Pope on at least one occasion. Not this Pope, but, well, yeah, it would be a good idea if he banned Jesuits from office, wouldn't it? And put himself out. But, yes, yeah, so we, you have to be aware of this, and I didn't encourage you to, you, you, sh you need to read, the, especially the New Testament. Get familiar with uh, especially the, the writings in the epistles, because that's post-cross. That is uh, where the, the apostles, apostolic Christianity, the, the apostles take the teaching of Jesus and apply it in that situation uh, after the cross. So this is after Christ has come, fulfilled his mission, uh, ascended into heaven, and poured out the Holy Spirit. So that that's where we have to look generally for for how we are to live as Christians. And the promises of God, because we live by faith, by the grace of God through faith. And his promises are what we can have faith in. Not just a vague faith, but a faith in what God has promised us in Jesus Christ. So it's important that all Christians know what those promises are. It's not faith is not a power. Faith is simply trusting God to do what he has promised. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. 